Hi, I'm Julia Sherwin, Public Relations Manager for PTZ Optics, joined by Matt Davis, PTZ Optics Lead Engineer. And we're going to talk to you today about a brand new joystick controller, the PTZ Optics SuperJoy. This is not PTZ Optics first joystick controller. No, what, no. What was um, the inspiration for a, a brand new design? So really over multiple years of us having uh, joysticks available to the public, you know, we've, we've garnered a lot of feedback. Uh, I absolutely love our end users because even if they know it's a pie in the sky request, they have no fears about sharing. Like it would be really cool if the joystick, you know, grew legs and could walk. Well, we might not accomplish that. Um, you know, we do try to take all of that in and really look at how we can achieve this and make it, you know, a tool for people that they really want to have. So this is probably the first instance where we've taken all of that feedback over all these years. And I think we've hit the mark on hitting most of those requests. It's truly versatile. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a product that, uh, you know, is meant from, from novice users to advanced use cases, um, depending on how much you really want to control your, your production, or even if you want to have volunteers involved, you know, there's ways that this joystick can really be flexible. So Matt, how would you compare the PTZ Optics SuperJoy to other huddle cam and PTZ Optics joysticks? What makes this one so unique? So right off the bat, the biggest thing, um, previously we've had serial joysticks that control things using serial communications and IP joysticks for IP control. Uh, this is the first time where we have actually allowed end users to mix and match. Um, so if you've got existing setups, you can still interact with those existing cameras using serial. If you're trying to move to IP, this allows you to kind of mix and match, or if you're all IP, you know, the joystick already is, is built to accommodate it. Um, so it's really the first time where we've had something that no matter your deployment, this really should fit the scenario. There isn't a, a wrong use case for it. And this is one of those things that you said, you know, based on customer feedback, this is what people are looking for. Yes, yeah, exactly. We have so many people that, um, you know, maybe they're, they're going to upgrade their uh, installation, but they've already got some existing Sony cameras on site. Um, and they don't want to get rid of that investment, and we don't want them to get rid of that investment. You know, we'd love it if they were all PTZ Optics cameras, obviously, but that's not the real world. We just want to, you know, play nice with their existing setups and help them migrate to newer technologies. Uh, and we're really hoping this is going to enable that for them. You mentioned uh, Sony cameras. A lot of people use them. Um, also, more and more people are adopting NDI cameras. Tell us a little bit about how this joystick works. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're trying to make it universal to work with as many things as possible. Uh, one of the things that we've done based yet again on our end user <laughs> feedback, um, I can't tell you how often we have people saying, but does it work with a Sony camera? And this is the first time where I can actually tell you it has been built with some features with Sony in mind specifically. So while maybe not every button on our joystick will operate a Sony, you will find almost every button on there will interact with a Sony, Sony uh, camera, which is excellent. Now, as we start looking at NDI, we wind up with this very, almost a very universal control language. So anything that has NDI should be speaking the same NDI language. Um, we will be releasing a firmware update to this unit that will bring NDI control. Uh, it will probably come a month or two after the actual public release of the unit, but it is going to add the ability to interact with any NDI camera at that point that's meeting the NDI standard. And the price point makes it really appealing too, right? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, we've done a lot of research here on our competition. Um, and while some of them might have some unique features, I haven't found anything that offers this level of flexibility. Uh, some of these advanced feature sets that we are offering on this joystick at a price point like we are. Um, everything else just seems to have other limitations and higher price points. Uh, so we're really hoping the price here really encourages more people to dive in and try and explore what they can do with it. I, I want to talk to you about specifically about, you know, what kind of end users are really going to say, hey, I've got to have a PTZ Optics Super Joy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, originally this this uh, joystick was being built with advanced users in mind, originally. 
So going beyond advanced use cases, um, you know, we start to realize that the idea of a production has changed, especially in the era of COVID. Um, you know, it might be more volunteers where you've got one expert available, but that expert isn't always available to you. Um, so we've definitely started to cater the device to accommodate for novice users at the same time. So you could have an advanced user go and set everything up. You can have a novice user actually execute the things that have been set up on it. Um, so the ways that we accomplish this, you know, it has IP interfaces so that you, just like a web page, you can have an iPad and you could have a volunteer that has this iPad and they've got control over up to three cameras uh, or a single camera control. And that they don't need to have access to fine tune settings. They can't go and change your white balance or your gain settings. They just basically are directing a camera to certain locations. Um, so, you know, whether it's an, a, somebody trying to do extremely advanced functions or even enabling a novice to take advantage of some of that advanced functionality, the joystick really is accommodating the entire spectrum there. Tell me a little bit about um, those, those different types of users. There's different modes that the joystick has to reflect those different. You know, whether we're starting to explore the custom control capabilities that this has that would fall more into the advanced user end of the spectrum. So if you have other IP equipment in your facility, uh, this likely can talk to that equipment. Uh, we've got these four custom buttons. You can assign all sorts of unique control options where you're defining the control mechanisms in the background uh, and able to interact with things such as another camera, a different manufacturer's camera that maybe isn't fully compatible um, to, you know, depending on the devices, TVs, uh, uh, sound systems, there's ways to IP control it. There's likely a way to take advantage of it from this joystick. Even studio lighting. Yes. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, movable screens. Yep. Things like that. So. And, and, you know, it's not all just for advanced users, just like our original joysticks. You know, if you really wanted to set everything up easily and just have a simple pan, tilt, zoom, um, you know, preset recall, that type of stuff, it's all in there. Um, and in fact, there's ways to lock down portions of the joystick so you can really cater to novice users and start releasing more control as more advanced users come on. Or, you know, as often happens, your novice users become advanced users over time. One scenario that PTZ Optics sees a lot of novice users would be in, in houses of worship where, um, you know, there are volunteers yes. helping to produce a whole um, service that's for remote viewers, of course, as we are in the age of COVID. Yeah, so yeah, that's really where some of these IP interface ideas came about, where it's a little web page served up by the joystick. Um, and you know, yeah, you want people to be controlling the camera so it's not just one static image going on. That's really why you often invest in multiple cameras or a PTZ camera to begin with. Um, but you don't necessarily want those novice users driving the camera around. Um, sometimes they land on things you don't want them landing on. Sometimes it's just not the proper movement that they, you know, they're exhibiting. In there. You figured out a way to circumvent that so that they're not landing on things you don't want them to. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as an example, if, if you had um, somebody that maybe was focusing on the wrong people in the audience or they thought things were amusing, well, guess what? You can really be in control of preventing that from ever happening now. Um, because you're only offering an interface that allows somebody to recall presets. So you really eliminate this, this possible shot of the wrong thing or, or moving to an area and nobody's paying attention to the fact you're, you're kind of viewing a dead wall. So that would be your basic mode. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, you know, with the basic mode, you really get the ability um, to either lock it down to camera selection and presets. Uh, or a slightly more advanced variation where you do gain joystick control as well and the presets, but you have no fine tuned control over the cameras whatsoever. You know, in making this basic mode, we came to realize that there was a unique opportunity in talking to a lot of clients where they'd say, you know, we really only set two or three presets on our cameras. We're, we're not going wild with 99 or, you know, 200 presets on here. So we realized that we were able to to create another novice s feature called matrix mode uh, and what matrix mode really enables in the end is 
using just your number pad on there, you have control over three cameras and three presets on each of those cameras. So, you know, in a more dynamic setup, you still have a limited interface that you can put in front of somebody and really say, hey, you know, when so-and-so moves to this location, you're hitting button five. Um, and yet they still have control over multiple cameras at the same time. And their indicator lights, right? The lo buttons are back lit, so yes. they know where to where to drive. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. We're we're trying to take as much of the guesswork out of this. Uh, we've got illuminated buttons now, uh, so when you go and select certain modes, the joystick is actually going to tell you, yes, this button is available to you for adjustment, or no, you can't touch it. Go ahead, touch it all you want. It's not going to do anything. Um, so it also helps. We're hoping ease some of the frustrations with people trying to learn what they can and can't do and adjust on their cameras because the joystick's really going to help them learn more about the camera at that point. We talked a little bit about that that whole production experience for for volunteer operators, for more advanced users. Let's talk a little bit more about that whole production value, what yeah. you get out of it. Um, so there are some exciting features we haven't even touched on yet with this. Um, one of the neat things when you're, you know, you've got a new venue or even you're just trying to tune everything, um, you might not want to boot up your entire production system to actually tune your cameras and get all your shots lined up. So we've actually built in uh, an RTSP decoder directly into this. Uh, and what you'll find is it's got an HDMI port now. So using this HDMI port to a monitor, as you select cameras, as long as they work with the RTSP feeds, you're going to get a live preview coming through. Um, you know, we've tested it obviously on our own cameras, some Sony cameras and some other plethora of names out there. Um, it's really, really nice to just be able to make all those adjustments uh, right from the joystick. You know, you're not having to boot up an entire PC to do this anymore. And you know, the nice thing as you switch, you know, it's not like you're handling your HDMI switching and your camera controlled. They're just tied together, trying to make it a very simple solution for people. Um, and, and you know, that kind of leads into some of, this is probably, our most requested feature for, for a future joystick, gain adjustments. And specifically, people wanted knobs. Uh, they must really like knobs. I will admit they're kind of fun to play with. But that being said, we do now have independent red gain, blue gain adjustment, uh, white balance knobs, uh, independent speed settings, and all able to be changed on the fly. So you really get a lot more control over your production um, you know, even as the productions occur, you can make those minute adjustments without having to open up an on-screen display anymore. Uh, it just allows for a really clean production at this point. And then I guess the other really cool things we've got, a fine-tuned zoom and a fine-tuned focus knob. So what these allow is the absolute slowest zoom speed and absolute slowest focus speed for you to make really minute adjustments to make sure if like something doesn't look quite right, you can really dial it in and make it proper. And that was a very requested feature. Yes, yeah, people really wanted that, just fine tune, more fine tune control out of our joysticks. Um, and I think we've hit the mark, you know, pretty well on a lot of that fine tune adjustment without creating something that's got, you know, an airplane cockpit style with a million buttons and knobs that nobody wants to see. Absolutely, and that's intimidating. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so when is this going to be available? Uh, very, very soon. Um, so you should start to hear probably some news uh, from any of your um, outlets for PTZ Optics products over the next two to four weeks as they get brought up to speed. You know, you'll really be able to start reaching out probably in the next two weeks to them uh, to ensure that you get the right info and and you know can be educated even further about the product itself. Well, thank you so much for telling us about the PTC Optics Super Joy. <laughs> yeah, my